Are you curious about the driving forces behind human behavior? Do you want to understand why we do what we do and make sense of the world around us? Look no further. On our show, we dive into the theory of spiral dynamics and reveal how it holds the answers to our most intriguing questions. From the dynamics of society to the depths of the human psyche, this show will take you on a journey of discovery and leave you with a fresh perspective. Don't miss out on a chance to expand your mind and to see the world in a whole new way. So welcome to the third episode of the Sades Project. My name is Max. And my name is Nick. Yes, and today, like we said, we'll tackle these uh, developmental psychology models, uh, mainly spiral dynamics. So this podcast podcast is a podcast between two Finnish brothers. We delve into the world of psychology, self-help, generally about how to live a good life. Talk a lot about meditation also. And anything else interesting which may come into the picture. For example, chat GPT and stuff like that. Yeah, new technological improvements. Anything relevant. We'll be talking uh, between us and then we'll uh, later down the line, we'll uh, invite some some guests on the podcast and they can share their experience also. Yes. So, so let's start. So Max, why would we want to understand the human development or what is the point of these developmental models at all? Yes, so what is the point of these developmental models? Well, first of all, wouldn't you like to know where your psyche is headed, where your values are headed? For example, what kind of way your thinking is going to be in the future, what you're going to value, as well as how society is going to evolve. Wouldn't that be interesting to know or beneficial so that you can actually structure your life in that way that you know sort of um, you can structure your life and make decisions accordingly. So wouldn't you like to know that? Yes. So that's why we have these models. So you can both understand yourself, your uh, sort of path of growth, as well as understand society, how it evolves, other groups, etc. And uh, yeah, so you can understand how these uh, intricate systems, for example, you, your family, your society, and etc., how they understand each other, how they relate to each other, how they work, and eventually how they evolve. So what you're saying is that we don't stay the same. Yes, we don't stay the same. The values, they they also change. Yes, the values you have and the values that society has, they change over time. And uh, people have uh, put these um, like patterns of, uh, we've seen these patterns of development. And that's where spiral dynamics comes in. These uh, patterns of development, they are very distinct stages, which uh, the human psyche as well as society tends to evolve through. We tend to fluctuate between different things and uh, become more complex in a way. So that's what this model describes. It describes these different stages, which have, which have been assigned different colors for the different stages of development. Okay, so this describes the different developments and assigns colors to the specific stages in both. Was it like both human psyche and society at large? large or how does this yes, model, yes. what's the basic of The this model, model describes the development of systems. So we could first describe what a system is. That's a good that, question. That might be a good question. So a system is any large whole of things which has qualities that the individual parts don't have. For example, your body, that's a complex system. Uh, For example, you have different organs, different uh, things in your mind, different belief systems, different different things that are interacting with each other, getting new qualities that, for example, your cells don't have qualities that you as a whole person has. Does that make sense? Okay, I understand. So, for example, our psyche is kind of a quality that can't be just... You can, can't get that quality by just adding up the pieces in our body. Yes, exactly. Or the heart, you can't just add up the cells in the heart. Or kind of you can add up the cells in the heart, then it becomes ho- the function of a heart. But it has a bigger bigger meaning in the in the, in the system. Yes, like for example, um, what would be a good example for this? Uh, it doesn't work like a lot of these systems don't work like math. For example, if you have 1 plus 1, it doesn't always equal 3. There may be some extra things that happen. For example, if you have a complex system, uh, this time not of your own body, but of uh, many bodies, many people, then you can see that there are these different dynamics. You study psychology, so you know there are group dynamics. There are group think, for example, that's a quality that the individual people don't have in themselves, but it comes, it arises when you have multiple parts in a whole. So when you have a system. So this model describes the development of these systems and how they interplay with each other. Okay, so these uh, systems, when you add up things, they will have new qualities. And it's important to study those qualities in in themselves and not just study the individual parts. Is this kind of... Yes. If I'm understanding correctly. Yes, so you have to study the things as a whole instead of the individual parts. Because often uh, in science, we like to like reduce things 
to like, we study the atoms to understand like a turtle or something like that. But you can clearly see that if you dissect a turtle into its atoms, you won't really understand what a turtle is. You'll understand what it's made of, yes, but you won't understand its behavior, its mating patterns and stuff like that. So you have to look at the whole. Mm, I quite, I, I think I understood this concept. It's kind of like if you have your phone and if you just study the individual pixels of the phone, you'll have no no understanding of what that phone actually does. That's a good example. Yeah. Because it has a whole operating system. It has these uh, apps you can download. It's a, it's a complete compl- complex thing. And studying the individual pixels basically gets you nowhere because it has complete new qualities, the phone, instead of the actual the phone instead of just the pixels. Yes, so why this is actually useful to understand is imagine you have a political system or a whole country that can be seen as a system and you make one of these small changes. If you only look at the parts, for example, if you make a change within, uh, uh, let's say, uh, agriculture or something like that, then you only look at the changes within agriculture conventionally. But using this model, you can see that Uh, there's a whole system in interplay. Like changing things in agriculture might change things for the economy, which might change things for how families operate, which might have a lot of these like complex ramifications that we don't like uh, conventionally think of. So, so that's why it's useful to understand this model. So it's kind of can be like a mistake to try just to try to make changes that would be beneficial for one part of the system. Exactly. And to think like, hey, this part has, has a suffering or it's not working, just to change that part, thinking that it will lead to good things for the other parts also. Exactly. Like imagine you're someone who um, wants to change global warming, wants to fix global warming. So you cut off all the vehicles. You might see that that it reduces global warming, sure, but you might also see that that screws up the economy. You can't have transport of goods and that just screws a lot of these different fields over and countries collapse and even a small change like that or I don't know, small change, but, but even yeah. a change like that, which only seeks to do one thing to reduce climate change has complex effects within the system. The system being the country in this thing. Interesting. So yeah, it's, it's time to get into the model of spiral dynamics. Yes, so spiral well, dynamics is uh, a model of this development. These mm-hmm. stages which have been assigned colors like we previously discussed. Um, so. Uh, It came about in the 50s when Professor Claire Graves studied his uh, like uh, psychology students, I think, and he noticed these patterns. Like people had uh, certain ways of thinking, hmm. so that's why he um, he uh, took lessons from biology, more specifically neurobiology, as well as uh, psychology, personality theories, uh, sociology, anthropology, and systems theory, and then he compiled them into one and made uh, the model. Spa Dynamics, which had a really horrific name. Uh, I don't know if I can bring it up, but it was it was a ridiculously long ass name originally. Yes, emergent cyclical double helix model of adult biopsychosocial systems development. Yes, but luckily, luckily they branded it Spiral Dynamics eventually. Yes, so it uh, classes these different stages of development into different colors. Um, they fluctuate between individualistic and collectivistic. You focus on yourself and you focus on sort of the group and the whole. What What do you think they, what do you mean they fluctuate? They fluctuate, they, like each stage, like the first stage, you only think about yourself and getting your own needs met. But at the second stage, you think about other people, like you sort of, um, you try to survive as a group. So it fluctuates between focusing on yourself and uh, focusing on other people. So one stage is like individualistic, then it's collectivistic, then and it's then individualistic. It's individualistic. Yes, and it, like it fluctuates. This, in this way, okay, I yes. understand. And um, yes, so eventually, or uh, um, to summarize these stages, eventually uh, they're survival strategies. Survival strategies. Yes. Okay. So that doesn't make them better or worse per se than the previous stage, for example, because they're fit for different environments. Like different, uh, more uh, rudimentary stages might be really good in a, a post-apocalyptic setting, but in a modern culture, it might not be so beneficial. So they're fit for different like environments. Yes. So also one other important lesson about this is because they're, um, they describe the evolution of systems, uh, they build upon each other. For example, uh, stage two builds upon stage one. And these stages, uh, I could name them up here so you get more context. Uh, they start from the bottom individualistic. We have stage beige, then we have stage purple, then we have stage red, 
stage blue, stage orange, stage green, stage yellow, and finally stage turquoise. Yes, so each stage increases in complexity and also the what you consider as sort of um, yourself, that increases as well. Like uh, at the first stage, you only think about yourself getting food. Like think about a baby. A baby might only scream to get more food and uh, want like rudimentary things to survive. Whereas then at uh, the following stage, stage purple, it's more tribal. Like you now want to survive as your tribe, but any outsiders, they, they're not considered as us per se. Another important insight about the stages is that they don't particularly like each other. And this is why the, the spot dynamics model explains a lot of these conflicts that we see in the culture. For example, mm -hmm. different belief systems or different political parties, why they actually bicker about with each other because they, these stages, they don't like each other. Why, why do you think that's the case? Why do I think that's the case? Well, we could look at it like uh, from survival, that if you have some way of thinking that works, you wouldn't want to change it for something else, right? Yes. Like something else could be seen as a threat to things that work and things that you survive with. So any change is seen as a threat. Yes, any change is seen as a threat. So if you have someone who thinks radically different from you, then that's seen as a threat. You sort of demonize that person so you don't have to explore like the other belief system. And as well, uh, um, the stages below, you saw that there were issues with the stage. So you transcend the stage and then you sort of don't really like the stages below either. So let's see. So let's uh, rewind. What's like the, the main characteristic of spiral dynamics? The stages build upon each other in a way that each stage is useful in different environments. Yes. And the stages con uh, concerned with our psyche, not only with our psyche, the individual, but also how, how groups and, and entire societies evolve. And that then that as the stages, they go from individualistic to collectivistic to then again, individualistic, collect collectivistic in this way. And then each stage, as, as we move on the stage, they get more complex and the circle of well, like uh, what you care about expands as you expand. With or the stages. circle of what is us. Circle of what is us or what is you. Yes. Maybe, maybe even closer. So what is like, what if I, I don't, I'm not really sure I understand yet. What is, what is the stage? What like, what is the spiral dynamics in a, in a sense, like what does that stage consist of in a, in a, let's take first an individual. Like what is, is it like values, beliefs, or how behavior, or what is it like, what is the, what is the stage in, its, in itself? Yes. So the stage that you're at, it's like a collection of uh, modes of operating a collection of values, a collection of beliefs, like all of that is a mixture of all. Modes of operating. Modes of beliefs. operating would be a good good way to phrase it. Is it like your, your kind of your lens of the world? Yes, your lens of the world. And then uh, you, it's hard for you to switch these lenses and you only see them through this one lens. Exactly. But also another important insight is that you can be at many stages at the same time. Most people have one dominating stage, which they are maybe... I don't know, 50, over 50% of, but uh, almost nobody is only at one stage. So that's also important to remember because it's often you classify people as, hey, you're at stage blue, you're at stage orange, but oftentimes, e even in different fields, like for example, you could be stage red within sports, but then you might be stage green within uh, politics or something like that. Okay, so in different areas of your life, you can be in different stages or at kind of a dis, uh, develop, you can be in different developmental stages within different areas of your life. Precisely. With your relationships, maybe in your, your family, maybe in your workplace, you're more, you're more this different stage. So it fluctuates within different areas of life, but we do have one main stage, maybe that describes most of our uh, views on yes, life. Yes, like how our, our belief systems. Our, exactly. The, the basis of our belief systems. So maybe it would be beneficial for us to go into these individual stages now that we have Quite, quite defined the, the model in its, its itself, so it's easier to understand the stages. Yes. So we start with the first stage, stage beige. As I said, it's sort of the stage of uh, babies and uh, animals, like they only think about themselves surviving. They want food, they want sex, they want shelter. They only think about the physiological needs. So imagine like a, a starving tiger. That would be a really good example of stage beige. That kind of encapsulates the whole stage. Like you only think about survival. You don't really think about 
anyone else. You might steal from people or you might hurt someone just to get food to survive. So they're like running entirely on instincts. Yes, and exactly. And they have no sort of reasoning or thinking for future planning. It's, it's like everything in right here, right now uh, for survival, exactly. the basic needs. Exactly. Like you barely even have a self at this point. You only think about getting food, getting water. That's like essentially you only think about the physiological needs. That signifies this stage. It's almost like an animal function. Almost like an animal or a baby that's crying. That would be a good uh, uh, example. This is the, like the first stage. And is it like that all humans go to like start with this stage? Would yes. You say that this? All humans start through this stage. And when we get older, depending on our, on our culture, of course, we evolve through these stages at different paces. So at stage base, you essentially do whatever you can to survive. You might steal, you might cry. You'll do anything to get your physiological needs, but that characterizes this stage. Okay. Yes. Stage one beige. And what would be like one word of describing it? Instinctual or animalistic? Instinctual. Stage one beige instinct. Instinct. You say it again. What was, what was it? Instinctual said? or animalistic. In, instinctual be. or animalistic. Stage one beige. Yes. So the first people would be at stage beige. Um, your early childhood, maybe years zero to two, could be at this stage. And uh, and of course, animals would like be. Like a survival stage. You're like, like a survival stage. All the time surviving. Exactly. All right. Would it be like uh, like maybe a brutal example, but if you're like during the World War, when you're like in a concentration camp, you're maybe yes. in- entirely... You basically. do anything you can to survive. You might steal, you might hurt someone else. Uh, another insight about these stages is that you can activate these stages if the environment changes. Uh, for example, if you... Uh, end up in a war zone, you might activate stage red, which is excellent in war situations. Uh, So even if you're at a higher stage, you might sort of temporarily activate these stages, or even beige, which we're covering right now. If you've been starving yourself, some of you may have had that experience, you sort of lose control, and you just need to think about food. Like, Mm -hmm. you get super angry, like, you only want food. Like, you, you can't think of anything else. So that would characterize that. What would be, like, the problems with the stage, or how can you, how might you transcend this stage? Well, the problem with stage beige is that it doesn't take others into account. So if you live in a tribe or if you live in a family, you might notice that, hey, maybe I have to take into account other people too. And uh, in the end, it's pretty hard to survive on your own. So it's beneficial to have sort of other people around you to help you survive, which leads us to the next stage, stage purple. Okay, it's hard to survive on your own. And if you only think about yourself, uh, screwing people over just to get your basic needs met. It's not the best survival strategy in most exactly. situ- situations. In some it is, but not most situations. And that's why usually we evolve to this next stage. Stage stage purple. purple. Yes. So stage purple could be summarized as the tribal, uh, animalistic, or what would be a word? Uh, animistic is the word. Tribal animistic stage. So imagine your early childhood um, you couldn't really tell the difference between what's alive and what's not. Like if your teddy bear fell off your uh, chair or something like that, it might have quote unquote died. Like that, <laughs> that's a classic yeah. example. Like you, you're really, uh, you can't really tell the difference between imagination and reality. That signifies this stage. And at stage purple, you're more tribal like. You might have some uh, uh, friends in kindergarten. Uh, then that friend group could be like the tribe nowadays. But back in the day, this was um, like, characterized by being in a tribe, like a, a group of maybe 50 to 100 people or something like that. So now it has evolved from just being just being you to now and basically an entire tribe can be like a small, maybe like even like 25, 30 people. Or maybe 100. even just three or four people, like a friend group in kindergarten. And yes. what is like some problems with this stage or why do we, uh, why should you evolve from this stage? So why should you evolve from this stage? Well, the issue with stage purple is that it doesn't really serve the individual all that well. Like uh, stage purple really focuses on the survival of the tribe, the survival of the group. Uh, But you sort of uh, sacrifice your own needs a lot. Like um, the uh, self is kind of like, or the individual is kind of like an organ of a body. Like you don't really have autonomy in that sense. Because you kind of have to like sacrifice yourself for a tribe. You yes. Maybe do all the, all these rituals, and maybe even you get thrown out of the tribe if you if you stop doing some of these rituals, and and that in you know, this way you have to just live like an organ in a body and not have any autonomy, and that can that doesn't serve your survival in the best way. 
Exakt. Yes, and this, also this is collectivistic again. This, this is stage. collectivistic again. From you like, you're with the group, with the tribe, so, the so you don't focus like on yourself. Individualistic, and now this, this is, is collectivistic. Okay. Yes, and also it would be important to talk about the triggers of each stage because that really helps you understand uh, how they interplay with each other. So stage purple is really triggered by like if you don't respect their traditions or their customs, their uh, ancestors or their uh, different spirits. If you don't respect them, if you trample upon sacred ground then they obviously don't like that. Like uh, the Avatar movie is actually a really good example of this because uh, uh, we have this stage purple tribe of the Navi, the, the blue people. And then we have this like uh, capitalistic stage orange people who come and uh, rob them of their natural resources and desecrate their sacred grounds and their spirits and stuff like that. So that's a really good example of stage purple if you- Perfect, yeah. So the Navi in, in the movie Avatar, yes. that's like a description of stage purple. They have this mystical, Things kind of like that. Everything is air. there's life in everything. All living, all trees and, and and birds and animals and everything is yes. The is animistic alive. thinking, animistic thinking, and then, they, then there's this mystical kind of uh, isn't this like these? For example, seeing a black cat. They're superstition. Superstition. Yeah. That's like yeah, or one seeing of the ravens or, or stuff like that. Seeing ravens, believing in superstition. That's one of these stage purple characteristics. Yes, because again, you can't really tell the difference between imagination and uh, like reality. Like you think that um, stuff that you imagine, like spirits and, and stuff like that, you sort of think that that's real. Also, Ewoks would be a really good example if you like Star Wars. They would also be a really good example of this stage. Stage purple. Okay, yes. great. So why would one, yeah, okay. So we move, we move away from stage purple because you don't really serve yourself. You're just a part of a bigger, uh, you're just a part of a tribe. Feels like you have to sacrifice yourself entirely just for this tribe to survive. Exactly. Which leads to the next stage, stage red. Stage red could be characterized by the power and dominance. That really signifies the stage. Like you really want autonomy now. Now you want all the resources for yourself. You want to have all the control. You want to um, have as many women as you want, have as much uh, money or uh, nowadays it's money. But uh, of course, back in the day, you didn't have that. Uh, but this is um, the stage of... Uh, like power, uh, right. the stage of power and uh, uh, tyrannical dictators. And for example, Julius Caesar would be a good example of this. We have, uh, well, we have recent examples with the whole uh, uh, Russia-Ukraine war. We have Putin would be a really good example of that stage, uh, though he also has some stage orange and of course a lot of stage blue. So would I say like the difference between stage red and stage beige, which are both individualistic, is now stage red is somewhat concerned about the future, about getting as much resources from themselves so they secure somehow the future also, not just the present moment. Yes, and stage red also you actually take into account other people. Again, these stages build upon each other. So at stage red you might have your, your gang, you might be a stage red gang leader, and you might have your close gang of people who you actually respect. But then other people outside that are still not seen as quote-unquote us. Okay, isn't like a ma mafia boss? That's yeah, like, like a, a mafia boss is a good example of this stage. You have like some close friends, but you really, if they, if if it, they still are very like a dictator, that if even if your close friends does something wrong, you can just throw them away. You exactly. can just kill them. They don't have compassion. They have no compassion. That's a good characteristic. Okay. And so they don't really think about if they murder someone, they, they don't really think that much about it, which makes them really good at, for example, war. Like I said, these stages are really good for different environments. At war, stage red, because it's so ruthless, it doesn't care if it hurts someone, it's excellent. So what might be the problems of stage red? Well, in modern society, you can really clearly see that uh, criminals, they wind up in prison or they might end up killing each other. That's a pretty big problem. Or you might end up with gambling addictions, you might end up with, well, other addictions, drug addictions, stuff like that. It leads to a lot of criminality, which of course, is illegal and leads to problems like getting end up in prison. Okay, and then... But uh, maybe one more uh, back in the day problem of this, for example, with Julius Caesar. If you're at stage red, because you take advantage of other people, you make a lot of enemies. So it's not really that safe for you. So if you end up having a family, it might uh, um, sort of pose a threat because some other person might be also at stage red and wants to take advantage of your stuff. So they might kill your family and steal all your money or, or your women or stuff like that. So kind of like a mafia boss, he creates exactly. a lot of enemies and the enemies might come haunt you later down the line. Exactly. And then you feel never feel safe in, in a way. Even like a dictator, uh, 
even if you are like at the top of the country, you're leading the entire country, you, you have to be afraid that everyone might stab you in the back, just like you have to wear a bulletproof vest. Just like you and Caesar got exactly, exactly. Yes, so they take all the power and resources for themselves, uh, damn the consequences. So is this like aggression? Is it like part of it? Aggression is part of it. A lot of stage red people are super like macho and aggressive. They want to show that they have more power. They want to uh, defeat their enemies and their rivals. They want to be at the top. But of course, as we discussed on the previous episode, being at the top, um, it creates stress because then you have to maintain that position and then uh, there might become some competitors, which, uh, well, at stage red could just straight up kill you. So that's not good. So kind of like the game when you're a child, uh, top of the hill, like the yeah, king. Yeah, of the exactly. Hill. That, that's, Isn't this like that's, stage red? That's stage red. That's a stage red game. Basically, that's trying good. to push everyone else down so you can be at the top. And when you're at the top, you're just trying to push everyone even more exactly. down. Um, exactly. But you're afraid that's at like sooner or later you will be pushed down. You will be also pushed down. <laughs> exactly. So this stage is very narcissistic, as you might imagine, and it's of course individualistic. And what are like the values of this stage? Well, the values it values of course power and force and uh, defeating your enemies and like honor, that's that's a big part of stage red. And uh, also you can't really, um, you can't accept defeat, which we see in Russia right now. They can't accept defeat. Can't that's accept the issue. Defeat. Okay. Even if you're wrong, or even if you don't really think about the consequences, so you might invade another country, damn the consequences, you don't really think about the system again. You don't think about what may happen with other parts of the economy, for example. Which we did see. So you're, you're not you're not able to admit when you're wrong. Exactly. You're thinking that you your beliefs your thoughts are the are are entirely true, and your will is the way. So stage red. My way or the highway. Yes. Stage red is often like compulsive liars, even if they get proven wrong. Okay, that was interesting. And you you move away from it because you're never really safe. Because you're just trying to get more from yourself. You create enemies. You might end up in prison. Especially in modern societies, you get punished punished for your deeds. Like it's like Genghis Khan, perfect example. He he was like stage red, uh, or the archetype of stage red. Yes, exactly. That even though he got like a lot of his way, he got like out of hedonistic pleasures, and he was like the the top of the the leader of everything. He had to he he just like killed everyone, and if someone someone like betrayed him, he just slaughtered the entire entire city or the entire exactly. Okay, Genghis Khan. So, so you realize that it's dangerous, and you actually need some principles to be sort of safe. You need some principles and some structure, which so, leads us to the next stage. So isn't like uh, GTA? GTA, is, that's a good example. Like most of us have played a GTA before, so yes. that's quite an example of this stage red. You're just like uh, trying to get more money, trying to kill most everyone. Most modern video games are actually pretty good at stage red. Like they characterize that a lot. Okay. So then let's move forward after stage red. After so we're now red. going to beige which is just you, just survival needs, just your basic needs. You don't care for anything else, just instinctual. Then stage purple, which is more tribal, superstitious, animist, ani animistic. Oh, what's, what's this word? Yes, like, animistic. Animistic. Like spiritual and, and But you have to sacrifice animal. yourself entirely for the tribe and realize that you have no autonomy. And then finally you get to stage red. You just think about yourself, your needs, getting your my way or the highway, just like a dictator or a mafia boss, screwing everybody around, just screwing everyone, killing people just to get your way, but creating a lot of enemies, realizing that you're really never really safe. You don't create, create, create safety in the long term and you might end up in prison. You get bad consequences. You realize that you will be punished for your bad actions and you will create enemies. So then the next stage, Max. Yes, the next stage is stage blue. And this is characterized by order, structure, and laws. Order, yes. structure, and laws. Yes. So whether it be religious laws like the Ten Commandments or just laws, laws yeah. in general, like uh, laws of countries and, um, and structure. So this stage is really necessary for larger civilizations, uh, which uh, makes it clear that we don't really have any sort of countries or any uh, non-war-torn countries uh, presently, which wouldn't be at stage blue or above, because you need that structure to sustain a larger system, because otherwise it just comes crumbling down when you have military dictators fighting each other and it just becomes chaos. So stage blue is necessary for higher civilizations. Okay, so you try to get away from the chaos of stage red, the chaos of just murdering, getting everyone just thinking for themselves, had no morals. You try to instill some laws, some rules, some regulations, some, some morals to create some some sort of 
structure structure in the society and that's really first when the societies can even begin to emerge yes so at this stage you want to be like a uh, a good member of the society you want to be a good christian or a good uh, political party member or something like that often you have a really strong ideology either religious or political uh, we have all these uh, well how would i explain it it's like the evangelical christian or the uh, well, quote unquote evangelical political person. That signifies this stage. So ideology. Signifies. Ideology signifies this stage very much. And you think that you're the only one who's correct. Like well, everyone should live like this way or you're sinning or you're doing something bad. You're, uh, I don't know. You you have all these laws in place that people should act the way your laws tell them to. So my country, my my religion, my holy book has the answers. Yes, my political and party. The way I'm living is the best way, and everyone else should live this way. And that's why I need to crusade. I need to go to other countries and tell them this is the way to live. Exactly. Just to spread that uh, that uh, structure, thinking that that will solve deeper issues. Yeah, you need to preach your religion, or you need to get other people to adopt your belief system, or you need to really focus on that. So it's like brainwashing. Yeah, yeah like brain <laughs> brainwashing is pretty pretty good. So it's really dogmatic and ideology. Uh, like um, really dogmatic and uh, what's the word? Ideology, ideologistic. Yes, I think that's. Well, isn't <laughs> this a what's say a tradition? Tradition, yes, tradition is that, is like, the, is that like maybe one one yes. characteristic of this. So they often are very conservative. So if you have the ultra conservative political party, they tend to be at stage blue. Okay. Yes. So what um, else is in stage blue? Isn't it like? Uh, but I've heard a classic example of stage blue is like a soldier dying for his country and taking, jumping yes. on a hand grenade to save save some other people. And there again, uh, if you notice, it has moved from individualistic to now collectivistic in exactly. stage blue. Exactly. So you sacrifice yourself for others. That's collectivistic. For the higher higher good. For the higher good. Or you want to be a good soldier, a good citizen, etc. Isn't like, uh, so military. Is it like military blue? is very very stage blue. Also, of course, the the war aspect of it is stage red, but the rules and whatnot that's very stage blue. So, so morals, morals is like a stage very blue is ultra moralistic. You right demonize people who don't like uh, follow your rules. And what do they uh, value? Stage blue. So stage blue values structure and laws. It values following those laws. And uh, it values often religion. Tradition is a really big one. And often stage blue wants to have like a higher meaning in life. You want to contribute through politi politics or you want to contribute through religion. You want to... Um, serve the higher good. Yeah, you want to serve the higher good. And you really value like family. Like stage blue is a really good example of stage blue. is like a super strict like uh, military parent. <laughs> That's a good example. Like stage blue has this um, uh, like ready set punishments and rewards. Punishment and rewards, that's also characteristic of Sage Blue. Like if you do this, then mm. you're grounded. Or if you do this, then you have detention. Or if you do this, then you have three years in prison. All of those are really characteristic of Sage Blue. So I was thinking that you need to punish bad behavior and yes. that will lead to good behavior. Yes. And that morals, there is a, something as fundamental right, fundamental wrong. Exactly, something absolute. Something absolute for the higher good of yes. them. But the problem of stage blue is that it hasn't really dealt with the desires of stage red. Stage red just wants to pillage, get more money, get more women, etc. A stage blue still wants that, but it represses that with these rules. And it thinks that, uh, oh, uh, I shouldn't do that because the principles say so. But it hasn't actually dealt with those desires. That's why we have all these Catholic priests uh, doing all these uh, questionable things. <laughs> and uh, uh, you have these desires. So like feeling like if you repress desires, they will somehow go away. Yes. Or somehow like repressing desires will deal with the fundamental issues and that they will not come up again. Exactly. But then will, they will bubble to the surface in, in nasty ways. Exactly. Because they are so repressed. They get stronger when you repress them. So what more would be some examples? Examples of stage blue. So uh, a, a Militaristic lot parent. So. Militaristic parent, that's a really good one. We have priests and nuns and missionaries tend to be at stage blue. Though we have... Uh, priests who are higher up the spiral uh, that have simply been educated through religion, but uh, mostly they are around stage blue. Um, then we have orthodox religion that tends to be at stage blue. 
Um, if we get any people, then Ben Shapiro would be a really good example. I don't know if you guys, you probably have heard of him. And uh, then we have the Ten Commandments. That's a really good one. Laws, right Laws. and wrong, regulations, follow exactly. these. Exactly. The, the Constitution and all of that. That's that's really the Constitution, okay. Yes. And then you said like conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories and nationalism is also a good one. Yeah, so thinking like kind of make America great again. Yes, like our country, our our like belief system is the best. Our country is the flag. Or our race or stuff like that. That's why Stage Blue tends to be uh, really like um, racist or xenophobic. And that really signifies this stage. So now the, the center of like what you care about has expanded to an entire country even. Or belief system. Or, or to race. an entire belief system, to an entire religion. Instead of just being in one tribe. Yes. So isn't like the, the circle of concern expands with these it expands collectivistic with these stages. But that, but then kind of goes becomes smaller again in these individual yeah, stages. Yeah, it kind of fluctuates with that. And then grows well. again in this. So now we have seen it grow from the, to the two collectivistic stages, stage purple and stage blue. It has become from just our tribe, maybe 25, maybe 100 people, to now to even an entire country, an entire belief system, the, the people that have the similar values, rules, or regulations. It can be millions of people now. But still, it's locked, somehow locked in, in a very strict manner kind of like a country. You see that my country is the best, the other countries are wrong. And maybe they are. these are still unable to see the nuances of different uh, beliefs, different uh, systems, uh, nuances of uh, that there is no, that you can see truth from different perspectives and that no one perspective can be right. And this is one, something that uh, the stage blue is unable to see. Would you, how as would you well describe? as most other lower stages. They're unable to see that there are other belief systems, other people who may also be equally correct or basically the same. Did we already go to why would one want to go? So the suppression is one thing. Is there anything else? Why would one want to wanna go away from stage blue? Well, the suppression creates a lot of suffering because you don't actually deal with that. So when you, for example, masturbation is a big one. At stage blue, uh, especially if you're religious, you might think that's a sin. But of course, you still have these sexual desires. So when you eventually do that, then you really guilt trip yourself so and you have and a lot guilt. of suffering. Shame is a big part. Shame and guilt. Shame and, gu shame and guilt is a big yes. part of the stage. Blue. And also that there are different belief systems. So belief doesn't equal truth. Belief doesn't equal truth. And uh, maybe this would this be kind of like accepting things with blind faith. Yes. Uh, stage blue. You have to take into account these other belief systems or these other cultures because you don't live in your village anymore. Now you live in a in a big city which has a lot of people from different countries, different belief systems, etc. So you have to take them into account again. So maybe before you could be in a situation where the entire country almost has the same belief system. Exactly. The same uh, the same laws, the same uh, same same religion and then it was more feasible. This created a lot of structure. Isn't kind of this uh, what it calls the medieval societies in Europe, the the crusaders and the what is called exactly. the knights, the the Catholic Church and Catholic. the Roman Empire. That's that's the Spar the, uh, Spar no, Spartans. The Roman Empire, not not Spartans. The Spartans would be a good example of state red. Okay, and what would be something like that? What triggers really? Usually, you can notice that uh, it's a good way to listen to these triggers and see that. Does this trigger you? Does this create some negative emotions inside of you or some frustration? That would indicate that you have some of these beliefs of this, these stages. And now that we're reaching stage blue and stage orange and green, we're really reaching these stages which people who are listening right now could have at least some part of these stages. So another thing I would like to highlight in this, if I understood correctly, Max, that these, these there's no one stage that's better than another stage. And often, actually... When you move to the next stage, you don't uh, forget these things. You simply just integrate them and build upon them. For example, uh, stage blue builds upon the stage purple. You still believe in some of the some of the similar things. You believe in like uh, family family bonds. You believe in in human connections, and they build upon each other. That there's no there's no shame or wrong in being any of these stages, and they are useful useful in different different uh, situations and that's why in a country you have different stages uh, you, they can they can tackle different issues in different ways that can be all beneficial exactly you build upon the previous stages and that's why these stages get more complex as they evolve further because uh, you get all these new insights all these new lessons these values and all that from the different stages so yeah so let's go back to what triggers stage blue 
well, not following your rules. That's a, that's maybe the biggest one. Not following the rules or the structure. Uh, lawlessness is a big one. And stage blue is actually probably the stage which is triggered by almost the most amount of stages. Like stage blue is triggered by uh, people who think different. It's triggered by people who uh, live their own lives, like stage orange. Uh, it's triggered by uh, all sorts of things. It's triggered by the lawlessness of stage red. It's triggered by basically every other stage than stage blue. So kind of like disrespecting somehow the belief system that yes. way. Kind of like burning the flag or not kneeling to, uh, to, to the flag. Yes. That's like not dis- not respecting the country or or like burning the holy book or something. Like yes, this exactly in, that. Like, very, very triggering. That's very triggering. And also stage blue really wants to know things. Like you really want to know what is the world, what is, why is it there? You want to have the answers to everything. Like you don't accept not knowing something. So even if there is no answers, you can't. You have to fill them with something. Some belief. Some belief. Look how the world came the, the way it is and well, how everything functions. That there's some explanation for everything. Yes. And in politics, a really good trigger is that changing tradition is something that triggers stage blue. So if you have these conservative uh, political parties, they really don't like change. They don't like new kinds of people moving into the country. They don't like new uh, legislations, they really don't like change. So even if the systems would be shit, they want to remain there because it's worked previously. So why change it? So stage blue is really triggered by change. Yes. And there was one thing I would like to add to this. Is it like that they really are triggered by chaos and lawlessness? Chaos and lawlessness is something that, that's why the prison system is maybe something that stage blue really values. All the stages really are triggered by the lower stage. Okay, always the lower, like that's like a, maybe a Well, that's a good, a good like, uh, what's it called? A generalization, that they're always or usually triggered by the lower stage. Stage purple doesn't like stage beige, and stage red doesn't really like stage purple. It takes advantage of it. Then um, the next stage, stage orange, really doesn't like stage blue, and stage blue doesn't like stage red. Okay, so they're always triggered by lower stage, seeing somehow it's worse and as bad and like that, how can they not see that this is not the way to live and how can they not see these problems that this stage causes? So usually, if I understand correctly, you can have toxic parts of each of these stages yes. and then you can have healthy parts of these stages. And that is usually these healthy parts uh, is something actually you want to develop and that you is very useful even and these healthy parts, you want to integrate them into your into your development in the, both the society and and individuals at large, for example, uh, integrity and integrity, honesty, discipline, discipline. All these are stage blue values. And what else? Laws. Laws. Uh, laws are useful. Principles. Usually uh, the next stage we soon go with orange really vilifies, really, really vilifies stage, stage blue and sees that we should abolish all laws. All laws are bad. You just, this is, that like we should be no able sense. to do all the drugs we want, have all the sex we want. We should not have any limitations on ourselves. And yeah, stage blue, as we just went through, is a lot of limitations. And you sacrifice for the higher good, the, the country, the, the, the religion, serving in the military. Maybe this is what we have also in Finland conscription that every person has to serve the country, serve one year of their life to, to help the country as a as whole. Exactly. That really signifies the stage. But you can see that you're really sacrificing your own life when you only live yourself uh, or only live your life for some future benefit or to serve the country instead of yourself. Like religions, for example, you live a really good life so that you can relax in heaven or you uh, work your whole life so that you can relax when you're retired or stuff like that. You don't really enjoy your life in the moment that much. So you sacrifice a lot for the future, maybe it's a future that's not even in this life. Yes. And that's why it has a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, limitations, and that's why you would want to transcend this stage to the next one. And the next stage, stage orange, is signified by uh, science. It's signified by entertainment. And again, not having those limitations so you can do all the sex and drugs you want, as well as success. That signifies the whole stage. You want to sort of like win in life. You want to have all the money and all the money you want. You want to have the the nicest car, the nicest apartment, or the nicest job. And uh, yeah, you really want to understand how the world works. For example, through science. Uh, now, instead of using religion and belief, you actually want proof of things. 
So you use the scientific method and uh, uh, you always want to like improve things. Self-improvement, a lot of it is at stage orange. You just want to improve your, your looks or you want to improve uh, your business. You want to get more money. So this is very individualistic again. As again, you see. yes. Uh, from, the, from the strictness of stage blue, from limitations, laws and rules, you now want to throw them all away. You want to get all the pleasure for you, all the money for you. And you want to just get everything, all the success for yourself, just for me. But now you recognize that there are other people and other cultures, so uh, you have more empathy. For example, Stage Red, uh, it wants more money, yeah, it wants the same things as Stage Orange, uh, but it actually has compassion. It doesn't just murder people just because, uh, well, it leads to more money. Stage Orange has, like, uh, it doesn't want that. It, it has compassion towards other people and it understands that there are other people out there, even though... For example, it might not like other people, stage blue, for example. It doesn't just go outright and murder them, like stage red would. So more nuanced exploitation. <laughs> yes, more <laughs> nuanced exploitation. And now instead of exploiting people, you exploit nature and uh, other animals and stuff like that. So maybe uh, what signifies the change from stage blue to stage orange is that instead of just exploiting everything, regardless of anyone, now, you, now this uh, exploitation for yourself is is going through these rules and maybe seeing loopholes in these rules that you can still stay. Look, I follow these rules, but not really. You're still finding nuanced and nuanced ways and loopholes in how you can get more for yourself. Exactly. And stage orange is really like competitive. Again, it's very similar to stage red, but now instead of uh, uh, murdering your opponent, now you actually want to win them within the rules. Like within, uh, for example. I don't know, chess. within chess. You want to win them within chess, exactly. Instead of just like throwing the pieces. Uh, throwing the pieces, pieces and away, shooting your Breaking opponent. the rules in the chess. You're just like, now you actually want to win, but with the rules. Yes. But you really care about this. You're quite competitive in a way. Or sp competitive sports, would you say they stage? Are they stage Competitive orange? sports, yes. Most but, of them are at stage orange. But you, some, I would say, are at stage red or stage blue. And that the rules are still uh, considered, and the other person is still considered. You don't want, you you don't do everything my way or the highway. You still look. There's these rules that we want to play by, but you still try to find exploit. Maybe using steroids or maybe yeah, steroids isn't that steroids? Like that's stage orange. Yeah, classic that's stage classic orange. stage orange. Like you don't at stage orange, you don't really care about your health. You just want the the best looks or the most money. You work eighty hours a week to get uh, sort of the most. Status. Uh, status. Status or status is a really good characteristic of stage orange. So this is quite a materialistic. It's very materialistic. And seeing like quite like the stage purple and the stage blue, the beliefs and the higher higher good, maybe the superstition of, of stage purple, that's completely forgotten. And now instead we want to prove right here. Now we want to see it with our own eyes. We want to feel it. We want to wanna grab, grab the truth with our hands. We don't want to just have some thoughts in our head, some beliefs. And we want to show our status to get the pleasure in the material world. Yes. We're going to get pleasure. We want to get status. We want to get my fancy cars. We want to get a fancy suit so we can show off everybody how, how great we are. Exactly. And we so that we can be win within the rules and be still be higher than everyone else. Feel like we're better some way, but within the rules some way. Like, in, like bodybuilding, would you say this is stage? Stage orange, yes, exactly. And uh, stage orange is also very hedonistic. Like you watch a lot of movies, you uh, drink a lot of alcohol, you uh, have a lot of sex, you do all these things and uh, um, you don't really care about uh, how you could use your time more effectively, how it affects your health and all of that. So pornography is like yeah, that's, example. Yeah, that's, that's a hedonist. really good example of stage orange. And just like exploitation, just like the, the no, no really emotions, just the physical, physical uh, material, uh, visual pleasure. Exactly. And now you can probably clearly see that uh, stage orange because of all the technology and science innovations, you can see that this is really, really common in, for example, social media. Stage orange is the uh, like dominating stage in social media. It's also the one that affects us most if we browse social media. We have all these like, uh, well, science is a big thing. You want to prove that you're correct. And um, we have the over-sexualization of everything, especially social media. Uh, that's really, really stage orange. One thing I've uh, one thing I've confused about is that science is uh, considered within the model spiral dynamics. Science itself is considered 
at least some parts of it is considered orange, stage orange within this stage of very individualistic, even though science could be seen as something that's not individual. It's something that builds upon, you need thousands of people with research papers, people uh, review those papers. So I don't really understand how science can be seen as stage orange, or it's something for me that in the model I'm not completely sure of. Well, once we get to the uh, tier two stages, stage yellow and turquoise, that's when it becomes more clear. Because science, again, uh, it's more similar to stage blue than you might think. You still have this scientific perspective. You're getting these proofs, these theories, and you're, you're proving them true, yes, but you're only proving them within the scientific belief system. You don't consider these other belief systems, these other perspectives. You're still very much limited to the scientific perspective. So that's why it's at stage orange and not, for example, stage yellow. So maybe now I understand, maybe the materialistic sense of science is uh, the reductionism, which means that it's dissecting things into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller parts and trying to explain the whole with those very, very small parts exactly. without taking the, the entirety of the complexity into account uh, in a way that the materi materialistic sense of science, that's, that's one that uh, would be in stage orange. Yes. So just valuing things outside, just the things you can see and 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 feel with your hands. The physical sensations, the physic the physicality of the world is very valued in stage orange. Yes. Like it's not systemic. That's the thing. You analyze atoms to understand the whole. Or that's oftentimes how it works. Yes, there is science and uh, scientific things you do which are at higher stages, but most of it tends to be at stage orange. Most of it tends to be researching technology. Most of it tends to be um, these hard sciences are very characteristic of stage orange. Soft sciences tend to be a bit higher than, than stage orange because you actually recognize that there might be nuances, there might be uh, black and whites, or instead of black and whites, there might be some grays. Uh, you realize that there might be multiple perspectives which could be true. Another thing is that, again, when we explain this, we might not necessarily believe all the things in this model. Yes, this it's is simply the a model. useful model we are presenting that can be, we have found somehow useful in explaining some things in the world, but this model itself is just another lens. Exactly. Another thing I, I read here is that it's uh, quite skeptical, and that can be even a, a toxic sense, skeptical, really wanting hard scientific proof through the hard sciences before it can accept anything, and then not even uh, allowing things to be Consider. unexplained. If they can't be, if there's not hard scientific proof, then it's not even worth thinking about. Yes, so you really need something to be measurable, or something to measurable, have some, yeah, good. measurable. You need to have things be measurable to even be considered to exist or be true. Otherwise, uh, it's just pseudoscience. It's just, uh, it's just not real. It doesn't exist if it can't be proven. Or, but the, the issue is a lot of things. Um, we simply haven't evolved to the stage where we could prove them. That's that's another perspective we could have on that. Um, like, um, how would I explain it? There might be other forces in the universe which we don't explain or we don't like have a way to yeah, sure. measure. So does that just not exist then? That's kind of how stage orange things. Kind of like having a stage orange, having a tool for everything. Yes. To manipulate the world and to change it, to measure it, to kind of, uh, this is kind of like a stage orange thinking. Then also qualifications is a big one. Yes. Having like a PhD or having like a a, good grade, like an study. education that you can say that you are or being a doctor and, and, and maybe in a, in a way just using that as a qualification in a stage orange, if I understood correctly, it's quite similar in a way that we, we see these qualifications as these people having all the answers and they're seen as like, wow, these people really know. Like what if you have a million about. subscribers or if you have uh, uh, the qualifications, if you have a PhD, then you have all the right answers and people tend to believe you more. So why might, what's like something we already went through quite this, but what's like the values of stage orange? Yes. Well, again, uh, achievement is a big one, which we just take. And uh, uh, improvement is also a good one. Uh, competition. Then we have material things like money, fast cars, or uh, new nice clothes, or a really nice like mansion or something like that. Uh, as well as the qualifications and like education. Like a five-star hotel. Like a five-star hotel and... And uh, um, the name of or your name on top of the hotel. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Like, kind of like. And then uh, um, then we have science and facts. That's a good one. Facts over feelings. Is kind yes, of like facts the, over feelings. That's the thing. 
So what would be, let's take some more examples. Would be like uh, bodybuilders? Yes, though some are of course higher, but uh, maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was younger, that would be a good example. Maybe even a touch of red. Uh, then we have uh, most atheists. Again, atheists who believe in the lack of other things. They believe in being atheistic instead of being sort of open-minded. So blind we don't really faith understand. Yeah, Blind faith in science. So, so science. Science now being another religion. Yes, yeah, science as a religion. Uh, then we have Stephen Hawking. That's a good example. We have uh, most uh, celebrities are either stage orange or stage green. Some, of course, it's stage blue. Um, we have a pop culture and Hollywood. That's really stage orange, though a lot of it is emerging stage green. For example, we see all these new um, LGBTQ members in movies and all this diversity and stuff like that. That's then stage green. But the Hollywood like uh, business aspect, that's stage orange. Then we have hookup culture and social media and uh, fast food like McDonald's. Again, you just want the uh, really tasty pleasure, pleasure right food. Now. You don't care about your health. So this is in a way, which is strange that uh, well, science, I would say, is future thinking, but some aspect of the stage orange is seen as more right now, right? Like sacrificing the future for the present, taking steroids to look good for now, but maybe sacrificing your health for the future. Yes. Or taking a uh, exploiting resource, exploiting nature, exploiting resources, exploiting, cutting down all the trees to get more money right now. Because yeah. you haven't expanded your like self to be nature and other animals yet. So the self is uh, what I have a hardest understanding about this. I understand that when we get to collective stages, the sense of self expands. But when when they go to these individual individualistic stages, for for example, stage orange, I'm not sure I see how it expands or what's like considered self now in stage orange. Maybe we could uh, rephrase it instead of us. It's maybe what you consider. What you so consider. stage orange, you consider more belief systems, more diversity than you would at stage blue, for example. So that what you consider is increasing. Let's take even more examples. I think this is. Uh, if I understand correctly with this model, this model describes that most of humanity is either in this stage we just described, stage blue, or now in stage orange. Maybe Trump before at least is a lot orange. Maybe this like the Trump building and, and the, like uh, billionaires is kind of, or like a is example of orange. Or like these entrepreneurs that have been very successful and maybe there has been some exploitation there within it, but we still see they are still very highly valued in this, in this like millionaires, billionaires, money and status is valued very much in orange. And yes, fast, fast, Max said fast food. And also like chips and candy and all of that. And gambling. Soda, gambling, gambling uh, alcohol tends to be. And, and like these entertainment parks, or it's called. Yeah. Like roller coasters. Roller rides. coasters and also partying. That's very stage orange. Drinking. Drinking and, yeah, having fun in that way. Like having fun without... Um, consequence. Consequence. Yes. So what's some triggers, stage orange? Why Why do people get... If you, if you have some orange in yourself, what words or phrases or something triggers you? Or maybe stages. As you said, probably stage blue. Stages, yes. So stage orange, it wants to have all the facts and everything proven through the scientific method, but everything who, that is not proven, everything that's sort of more belief-based, like for example, stage purple, stage blue, stage green, and stage turquoise, uh, they're seen as sort of um, uh, not true or like misguided, and that can really irritate stage orange. Like that's why we have all these uh, religion versus atheist debates, that's pure stage orange. Debating. Debating, that's, yeah. Proving people wrong with facts. Exactly. This is like stage orange. Yes. So stage orange is really triggered by things that are rooted in belief. Like, for example, stage green, pseudoscience and spirituality uh, and like crystals and veganism. Because stage like orange doesn't see the proof in it, it gets really triggered by it. Because you can't really measure like the energy of a crystal or something like that. It's just considered as bogus and it's just... Um, so pseudoscience yes. is like the wor one of the worst triggers. Pseudoscience is one of the worst triggers. And also um, spirituality and feminism, LGBTQ plus pe like people, that can also trigger stage orange. And limitations. Limitations. Limitations like regulations. 
and one of the classic examples I think is high this. taxes. That's high taxes, like uh, I think libertarianism. This yes. like sense that you, that uh, the the society as it functions as like capitalism functions very well. There should be no limitations. Everything we just figure out it should be the survival of the fittest. Everyone should just grab themselves by the bootstraps and just uh, get themselves hustle, hustle, grind, r- grind until they they will succeed. And that this is the best way to live in society. And if you can't do that, then you're just lazy. Yeah, and Stage Orange doesn't consider the people who might have it harder. The, but this uh, is not how it works. Yeah, They yeah. don't consider that there, there is a lot of individual differences and all people can just grab themselves by the bootstraps and, and hustle to become a millionaire and to buy that fancy Porsche to be somehow then considered successful. Exactly. And that everyone cannot be successful by def- definition. Exactly. Or everyone can't be a millionaire because money is in a way relative. So what's like, what's something, what's one way you suffer when you're stage orange or what's maybe some toxic parts or what's, why, why would one want to develop beyond this? Or what well, might a lot be some of problems? people, uh, the toxic part, how you suffer through stage orange is that if you just eat fast food, you party and drink every day, then you can, and you like watch some movies every day. You you might clearly oh. see that you waste your life. Your health goes down the drain. You might become obese. You might get mental health problems. That's one of the main issues of stage orange. That's Sub-confusion. why we have all these things on the rise. So you sacrifice, uh, you exploit your kind of uh, life and your body and everything just to get like pleasure and and uh, have, have it great right now. Gamble yes. all your money yeah, exactly. away. You want things right now to be nice. And you will, in the future, the consequence. You will suffer the consequences, even though we can't see them right now. You, if you just don't think about the future at all, you will suffer the consequences in in some way. Exactly. Let's think of other 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 negative aspects. Stress. Stress is a really good one. Yes, when that's st- one that many people have experienced. Stress is very stage orange because you're just trying to hustle. You work like, eighty hours a like week, or even more than that. Is like the hustle definition culture, of this yeah. uh, is like. The archetype of stage orange, maybe this, this person, and uh, well, it's this, uh, um, this twenty-one-year-old millionaire who just wakes up every day, every morning at five a.m. and then goes to the gym, and after that, just works on his uh, his online business, uh, every all all day. And then, what else could he do? That would be very stage orange. Well, he, I don't know, grabs a snack from the <laughs> the fast food store, and and um, let's see. Goes out drinking on Fridays and and when he has time to relax, he grabs the next show and watches that. Stuff like that. Okay, so stage orange, sacrificing the future for the present, all of stress. Is there anything else negative we could we could think about that? Well, stage orange is ultimately unsustainable. Unsustainable, yeah. On the individual scale and on the collective scale, if everyone lived like we do in the West, like stage orange lifestyle, we'd need, I think it was some crazy number. I don't remember exactly what it was. Was it like seven or eight or was it 30 and planets that we'd need for everyone to live the way we live in the West? So in the so in a way, unsustainable. unsustainable, both in society at large, exploiting nature, exploiting all the resources we have, Unsustainable in society at large and as an individual, unsustainable as your health will suffer, your mental health will suffer, you will have a lot of stress, maybe have some sickness, illnesses due to the the way you're exploiting and taking resources kind of from the future that's not yet, should not yet be used and trying to have it right now. Exactly. Maybe this, uh, would, would you say that this brain boosting pills and caffeine, and trying to trying to maximize, be as productive as possible, right here and right now. Spend every second wisely. This that causes a lot of stress as well as competition, and that also makes you suffer, of course. And uh, with the competition aspect, you realize that it's better to cooperate than to again just have a free for all. So uh, this is quite similar to Stage Red. How would you still, if you uh, Stage Red was this very maf- mafia boss dictator? How would you say this still like difference from? from that one other than what we already went and the through. Rules. Competition and rules. Hmm. Is it still that it's ev- still thinks more about the future than stage red or? Yeah, stage red doesn't think at all about the future. As we saw with the Ukraine Russia war right now, it doesn't think about the future consequences of things. Where stage orange can actually use logic 
stage orange is very logical instead of impulsive like stage red. I think it's now time to move on to the next stage, stage orange. So yes. after this, you realize that you're so stressed, your, your health is suffering, glow, glow, the planet is warming, we cannot, we cannot, it's not sustainable exploiting everything, the entire world in this way is not sustainable and leads to a lot of stress in the moment and in the future, it all will come crashing down if we don't change your way of living. Just, every, just everything being hedonistic and sacrificing the future for the present then you evolve to stage green. Exactly. So stage green is all about the social questions, fixing climate change and fixing, uh, like getting more uh, equality and <coughs> more, what's it called? Uh, more diversity and uh, all of that. Like fixing social issues is the main thing of stage green, as well as uh, getting more of that healthy aspect now. Now you want to live healthier. You want to do yoga. You want to, uh, be vegan or vegetarian or eat healthier in general. You wanna um, you wanna strive for more equality and animal rights, and you wanna get more like deeper connections with other people. Because again, stage green now is more collectivistic. You wanna focus on the relationships between people instead of just getting more money to yourself and damn other people. And you also wanna now like uh, explore yourself more. Like you might have some trauma, you might have some some other stuff you have to deal with. So now at stage green, you actually deal with that. So in a way, this is kind of the circle of concern and what you're concerned about, again, expands not just from your country, from your beliefs, to other cultures, to other belief systems, to other religions, other countries, caring about even nature and, and animals. animals at large. Now it has expanded very a lot, a lot from stage blue, so the circle of concern. And suddenly, maybe even all humans can be co considered in, in your circle. Not all humans, but at least, the, the especially the weak ones, the ones who have it bad, are now considered. Or the ones who are not represented, the ones that are suffering a lot now, they are very, very clearly in, in your circle of concern. Exactly. But then again, everything isn't encapsulated yet at stage green. For example, some criminals or some people who don't fit the social norms might be outcasted at stage green. But specifically those who have it weak or those who have had it weak are in focus at stage green. The suppressed. Yeah, the suppressed, exactly. So now stage green is more like emotional and sensitive instead of being rational and like uh, uh, scientifically minded like at stage orange. Now you Facts. can, yeah. yeah. Instead of being factual, it's more emotional. It's more feeling, yeah. Yes. But the thing is that uh, they can't really understand each other. Like stage orange and stage green, oftentimes they don't understand each other which leads to the issues of stage green, uh, like arguing with emotion and stage orange arguing with logic. And neither one reaches any conclusions because they don't understand each other. So they will now, now want to research themselves, see what, like, what's going on inside of body, try to feel better and now be more sustainable. Try to include every, all the one that have it bad in society also include them and not just have everything for me, more money, more, more power for myself, but now wanting to share that. So now the power structures, they want to have it equal, right? Everyone is now equal. It's collectivistic again. Collectivistic. Yes. So it's now suddenly like money and looks are not as valued as in Yeah, stage you don't orange. really care about your money and your looks because uh, st status doesn't really matter when everyone's uh, equally worth. Yes, so stage green now again, uh, an important insight is that spirituality fluctuates between the stages as well. Like stage purple is very spiritual, it's animistic. Stage blue is very spiritual, it's religious. And now again, stage green is very spiritual, but now again, you uh, the spirituality isn't as belief oriented. Now you wanna explore yourself. You wanna, I don't know, uh, do some psychedelics or you wanna uh, do some yoga retreats or stuff like that. It's you wanna more, meditate. Uh, through and experience. More now. through experience, exactly. But of course you do also have these beliefs at stage green. Like for example, belief in crystals or belief in in spirits and stuff like that, even though you might not have experienced them yourself. That's quite complex, and I'm not sure I understood. Like, what's like the in terms of beliefs and maybe the spirituality, how it differs from stage blue? It's quite a complex. So high way. stage stage blue differs from stage green. Yeah, in this way, because in they can way. still have these strong beliefs that are not rooted in through any any experience, but it can still. Yeah, different. It's still different. 
Yes. Well, Stage Green uh, doesn't see things as absolutely true. That it would maybe vilify be biggest, others. Maybe. Yeah, it, it doesn't have that. Well, Stage Green does have moralism that we've seen a lot. For example, with a lot of political debates, people who are like doing um, things that Stage Green sees as wrong. For example, abusing animals or uh, I don't know, doing something unequal or stuff like that. It can trigger trigger Stage Green. But I would say it's it's a bit of a complex issue because some people who are educated into stage green, into their culture, their psyche is still at stage blue. What do you think about that? Yes, an important concept in this uh, is part of is you cannot skip these stages. You can't just move from stage beige to suddenly be in stage, stage green. You have to actually go through these stages, get the, the experiences and learning and what you're supposed to learn from this stage, and then only you can transcend it can skip these stages. And if you try to skip these stages, you will have some suppressed parts that will be active with these, these uh, so quote unquote lower or earlier stages. You can't just skip those and, and just uh, try to act like you would be already at that stage. Yes. It will create some, it will create some toxic parts in you that will not be transcendent. You actually have to go through these part by part. You can't just skip stages. And I think you can make stage green beliefs into stage blue, which makes them very hard to tell apart because we have all these ideological stage green people ideological vegans who are preaching about all that stuff uh, but I don't know if their psyche would necessarily be at that stage yet um, yes so some things stage green values is equality and they uh, exploring yourself collective spirituality emotions and openness being nice to people compassion then deep relationship, often you see hippies is like a perfect example. It's a stereotypical this, example. Uh, this, this very stereotypical hippie that goes to like chanting, chanting circles and, and uh, is a vegan and, and has some, and cares a lot about animals, cares a lot about social issues. Deep relationships is something they value. And then big one is sustainability and nature, sustainability in nature. Hippies classically value nature and being in nature, walking in nature, taking care of nature, living maybe in some, uh, going off from the city and just living on a some somewhere in the forest and having your own house there and being one with the nature. Exactly. These are some things green very highly values. What would be some more examples other than hippies, some vegans? Well, activists are a really good example of stage green. We have uh, uh, liberals tend to be at stage green, though some, again, are at stage blue. Uh, we have the channels Vice and Vox. They're a really good example of stage blue. Uh, we have the Burning Man Festival. It's like the epitome of stage green. Yeah, because you start from, you go to the sand place, you build up this quick festival, and you clean up everything when you leave. And you don't leave a trace. Such, like, uh, you only have a trace of exploiting the nature there. Bob Marley, maybe these hippies. Hippies is like perfect. And then pride animal and human rights and social so, so social justice uh, social justice in its, itself taking care of the people who are suffering that's a stage yes. stage green and then we have yoga and meditation uh, but again more focused on like uh, um, being stretchy instead of uh, all that much Western, of the yeah. deeper spiritual stuff yes so I would say is something that then triggers stage green so stage green is very emotional, so it's triggered by a lot again, just like stage blue. Um, stage green is triggered especially by, uh, again, the lawlessness and the unsustainability of stage orange and uh, criminality and uh, um, also the consumerism of stage orange and the uh, people not valuing health and uh, not valuing global warming and uh, uh, neutrality of stage yellow is also an interesting one. Because stage yellow, is, it sees these perspectives. The next stage. Will be the next okay. stage. So it sees all these perspectives, so it doesn't take any strong sides, like stage green definitely does. So stage green doesn't like that. But it, you could maybe summarize it to um, inequality and, uh, injustice. and injustice. And, and just being selfishness is something that uh, can, be, can be triggering. Yes. Not taking care of, not taking into account other people's feelings and emotions, beliefs inequality and injustice and unsustainability in a way being selfish selfish is something that really triggers and obviously very big is this uh, in society you see this stage orange stage green debate and how they both like kind of quite hate hate each other 
this kind of this, if you think like this classic uh, stereotypical, it's, it's not this black and white, but this Wall Street stockbroker versus this uh, hippie, hippie with uh, walking barefoot and how if they would be debating, they would be completely opposite values. So then again, how do you, why would you want to transcend this stage? What's like, this seems like this would be perfect. And this is already quite in a way, quite advanced, quite complex stage. Why, why would someone want to get out of this? Or what's what could be some problems, some toxic parts of stage green? The biggest issue with stage green is that its methods of uh, getting change into the world, changing those unequal things, it doesn't really work. It sees these issues, yes, but it's not able to change them. Like protesting by laying down on the street doesn't lead to global warming getting better. You need actual solutions, some complex, nuanced solutions, which take into account all these different perspectives, all these different stages. So that's the main problem of stage green. So simply re uh, raising awareness of issues doesn't solve them. Yes, exactly. What could be some other problems with uh, stage green? Other problems is, well, again, that the world is complex. Some simple solution doesn't necessarily work because it might affect other places or other fields in the system. Like changing global warming by cutting the traffic, that doesn't work. You need complex understanding of these different things to be able to get solutions that actually fit. And thus we move on to the next stage, stage yellow. Yes. The systemic stage. stage. The and systemic this, stage. This stage is very important because it's in a completely, it's completely different from these other ones. Why might that be, Max? Yes, so stage yellow is now at, there's these different tiers. There's tier one, all the stages we've covered now have been at tier one, and tier two now understands the different stages. It's more complex now. So stage yellow is the first stage on that stage, or first stage on that tier, I mean. And uh, you could characterize it by, again, the systems thinking, which we've covered a lot here. You think about the whole instead of the parts. And it's a lot more relativistic because you understand different perspectives. Things can be true and false at the same time. Paradoxes can exist. Different belief systems might be true at the same time. Uh, you can't say that any one thing is the best thing. That characterizes the stage. So it's more systemic. It Take, takes into account different views and different ways of thinking. Kind of in a way, uh, I love the story of you know, it's like five blind people are looking at are looking at an elephant and and one one of the blind people takes uh, the, the the trunk and feels the trunk oh this feels oh this is kind of like a like a worm an elephant must be like a worm another blind people takes uh, looks at the the leg of the elephant grabs oh it's like a tree it's like a tree and then another one grabs the what's the uh, like the, the tail. tail the tail and go, oh it's like a paintbrush and then these blind people argue, no, the elephant is not like a tree. It's like a paintbrush. Can't you see it? But they don't see that you cannot understand the elephant without seeing the whole of the elephant. You need that, multiple perspectives. You need multiple perspectives. You can't just have one perspective. And all these perspectives are true at the same time. Elephant is both like a worm, like a tree, and like a brush. And they're all true at the same time, just from different perspectives. And this is kind of a stage yellow thinking in a way. You understand that different perspectives can ex coexist and be true at the same time. Yes. And another insight is that nobody actually perceives like objective reality either. Like we have our senses, everything goes through our eyes, our brain, our belief system. So we never have full access to the elephant in this case. All we have are these perspectives, these different things that we're touching. So it's best to touch many things so that you get a wider perspective of what it actually is that you're touching. So you understand the elephant, or in this case, reality, or any other issue more. So you need multiple perspectives. And that makes Stage Yellow excellent at solving these complex issues. Because you understand these multiple angles, you understand the lower stages, points of view, so you can get solutions which fit their needs and their wants. So we can take into account different perspectives and keep them uh, at the same time without clinging to e e either one of those perspectives and seeing them as absolutely white. They see everything as gray. Nothing is now any more black and white. It's multi-perspectives, yes. Multi-perspective, multi multiple perspectives at the same yes. time. Yes. So um, what's like some other other things that, what would be some quotes of Stage Yellow? Some quotes of Stage Yellow? Well, um, one of my favorites is one that Niels Bohr had. It's, no, you're not thinking. You're just being logical. That's a really good response to someone at Stage Orange. 
because stage orange again only has that one perspective he's only being logical he's not actually thinking deeper he doesn't have the multiple perspectives and that could be by socrates wisdom is knowing what you don't know that's a real good one as well and then einstein's quote would be we can't solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them again you need these different perspectives to solve complex issues Yes. So could we take some examples of stage or maybe values first? What yes. does stage yellow value? Well, it's systemic thinking, as we just said, thinking in terms of system, seeing, in for terms example, of this pollution, holes. global warming as a system, and not just caused by just these greenhouse gases. And if you solve these greenhouse gases that are caused by these cars, then you solve the entire issue. It's very complex, very nuanced, and trying to see how different parts interact and create the bigger problem and trying to values a lot of complexity instead of simplicity. Values paradoxes, as I said, that things can be true, opposite things can be true at the same time. And then also for, for once doesn't need to explain everything, can keep uncertainty, uncertainty or not knowing is okay now suddenly. Like if you compare that to stage blue and actually stage orange as well, that needs the answers. And then also a really massive one is knowledge and learning. Because stage like yellow wants to understand these different perspectives, you actually need to research them. You need all these different perspectives to like understand the world better. So stage yellow is often a lifetime learner. You read books and you listen to podcasts, for example, like this. You uh, focus on a lot of things so that you can get these uh, like big picture perspectives. So deep thinking and maybe uh, some philosophers could be seen as philosophy in itself would be stage yellow. And other examples of stage yellow would be um, chaos theory as well as quantum mechanics. What would you say is a very short description of chaos theory or quantum mechanics? Well, chaos theory, a good example of that is that a small change can have a massive effect. The butterfly effect. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but the butterfly effect. A small change in some system can have a complex change uh, down the line. So that's kind of how stage yellow thinks. Kind of like a butterfly flapping its wings. North America can cause a hurricane somewhere else. This is the, maybe not how it actually works, but this is the, <laughs> but it's a good example. the idea of just a small, it's very small butterfly flapping its wings, wings and create a wind somewhere that can create more changes, more changes. And thus this is like a way of systemic thinking. Then we have uh, Wikipedia. We have Spoil Dynamics as well as Joseph Campbell who had the theory of the uh, hero's journey within the uh, entertainment. Uh, we have Abraham Maslow who had the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, we again also already covered the philosophy. Philosophy as a whole tends to be at stage uh, yellow, as well as top intellectuals in university. Those are all good examples of stage yellow. So then, uh, because the stage is the first stage that understands different perspectives, understands different stages, does it still fight these stages, or is it somehow free of this now? Well, stage yellow, because it's a tier two stage, it understands the other stages, so it doesn't get triggered as easily but some things definitely do frustrate stage yellow. For example, people being super ideological, being like thinking black and white, that can really frustrate stage yellow, that they're not able to consider alternative perspectives. As well as when uh, stage like, uh, or tier one stages like bicker about with each other instead of understanding each other, that can really frustrate stage yellow. And uh, um, also like limitation on things, limitation on change is a big one, a limitation on uh, uh, different perspectives. If you have some set rules you have to follow, that can really irritate stage yellow. So it does seem like, if I understand correctly, this is a quite a rare stage. And even though you have, might have parts of About this... About 1% of people are at this stage. According to this model. And it's a very rare stage in a sense that, yes, a lot of people might have parts of ye this stage yellow, quote unquote. But having like this as your main stage is very, very rare. And uh, it's very quite complex and it needs a lot of development. Then finally, the last stage of the model after stage yellow. Well, first, what's like some problems of stage yellow? If, even if this is so advanced, it's quite difficult because I would not say that uh, either one of us really is at this stage. So yeah, even trying to understand it. Neither of us are is... at stage turquoise, so it gets a bit complex from here. But this is what the model describes. The model describes that uh, stage yellow um, that the thinking and the models of stage yellow doesn't ultimately lead to happiness. That you have to actually transcend the mind to reach happiness. 
Uh, you have to let go of your, all your models and all your thinking. And uh, oftentimes you have to let go of your sense of self, your ego, uh, otherwise known as enlightenment. Uh, you, uh, let's see, you often need these uh, metaphysical or spiritual experiences to transcend to the next stage, to actually understand that things aren't only in the mind. Um, and yes, another big issue, uh, like a wide issue with stage yellow is that it's often very individualistic. Again, it's an individualistic stage. It has like a lone wolf mentality, but the issue is you can't really solve global issues. Even if you have the answer, it doesn't solve the issues if you don't have a community or a group to back that with. So stage turquoise is needed because stage turquoise is collectivistic. It has that community. So let's go into the final stage, stage turquoise. Yes. So stage turquoise could be summarized as the holistic and mystical stage. And this is where it gets a bit deep and woo-woo for us because we haven't actually experienced this, or at least not much of it. And this is something like maybe it's not such use, so useful for most people, not maybe. Because 0.01% of people or even less are at this stage. But according to this model, uh, after this systemic stage, there's like this stage uh, uh, turquoise, maybe like Master Yoda or Uruguay from Kung Fu Panda. There's this very high highly uh, like super like extremely wise extreme like imagine like the, the most wise people that could possibly be and the most understanding people that that there like has no uh, doesn't willify and get triggered almost doesn't get triggered by anything anymore it's extreme emotional control again and uh, uh, stage turquoise really wants to like elevate the consciousness and the happiness and well-being of not just people around them and uh, and nature, but also animals. And really the whole universe is now seen as the us. Yeah, so suddenly like in, even the people that are quote unquote evil, uh, differing from stage green, that vilifies some of the, the suppressors. Every Now suddenly every single human is seen as part of us. There is no more distinctions between countries, between different cultures, between different beliefs between the people that are so quote-unquote good or quote-unquote bad. Everyone is just seen as us now. Every person is kind level. of seen as like uh, a family member. Every single person. So what does this uh, stage value? So this stage values, again, wisdom and uh, uh, holism. Again, seeing the whole picture. Very characteristic of stage yellow as well. Um, let's see. A deep spirituality is a big one. Uh, having these mystical experiences and getting insights instead of thinking your way to truth is a big one for stage turquoise. You actually experience insights and understanding instead of uh, getting explanations and uh, using logic to understand the world. So maybe like these very wise, ultra wise people are just like yeah, that's the master Ugwe or master Yoda would be seen as stage stage blue or some very stage turquoise. Some very uh, what I call saintly people from the past that uh, have uh, sparked entire religions they could also be that they somehow experienced experienced everything the whole of reality and they're very very wise i'm not sure i can't completely understand this but according to the theory these people would be at this stage turquoise yes so let's see other people who you might have heard of are Sadhguru, who also has some i would say stage blue in him some stage blue beliefs because of the culture he lives in uh, we have Eckhart Tolle and Muji. Uh, we have Ken Wilber and, of course, Yoda and Uruguay. Those are really good examples. So and this is kind of the final stage. Is there still, even the, at this stage, there's something that triggers this? Yes. The world's chaos can really trigger stage turquoise as well as, like, mundane problems. Like, instead of uh, stage turquoise, again, wants to, like, elevate the consciousness and well-being of everyone. It wants to deal with these big issues so small issues like, I don't know, dealing with bureaucracy and paperwork or your car breaking down, that can really like annoy stage turquoise. And we still like, lastly, what like, what's something that this values this stage? Stage turquoise. Turquoise. Well, we already covered that. That was uh, the deep spirituality, the wisdom, wisdom. and uh, also minimalism and simpleness, as well as uh, well-being, both of humans and nature, etc. So now we have covered through all the stages. Let's take let's take some first. Notes. Don't worship stage turquoise, even though it's the highest stage. Uh, stage turquoise also has some issues. For example, it can become too sort of 
uh, out there to like woo, woo, not really understanding like uh, mundane normal problems, as well as leading to a lot of these guru complexes. Uh, many of you might have heard of Osho. That's a really good example of that because remember they're still human, so they have human psychology, so they're still affected by human desires. So it can really easily lead to corruption when they have followers who worship them and can give them money and sex, etc. So that's a big issue. Even though you're at stage turquoise, you can always develop yourself. All of these stages, you can always develop yourself. There's always things, there's always issues to solve. Yes. So that was the model of spiral dynamics. So let's take a short summary now. We've gone through all these stages. Let's start from the beginning, Max. Stage beige. Quick, quick summary of what we went through with stage yes. beige. So stage beige is the first stage, the individualistic and survival-based stage. You only think about yourself and getting your physiological needs met. And then we move on to stage purple, which is more commu well, more tribal, superstitious, animistic, and thinking of now your tribe now being collectivistic and sacrificing for the tribe, but having no autonomy, being more like an organ in a body. Yes. And then we have stage red, which is now again about getting more autonomy, getting more money and more women and more power to yourself. Damn the consequences. Now you realize you create a lot of enemies. You, your future might be, uh, in the future, you're not really safe. There's a lot of chaos. It's just everyone fights for themselves. So you need some rules, some regulations, some morals, some principles. You move on to stage blue. Now this is stage blue is very fundamentalistic has very strict rules and regulations. Now you already sacrifice the present moment for some future goal, some higher good. Maybe even in the next life, you will have a better life if you live properly, strictly now in this life. But you realize that there's a lot of suppression. Suppression, these uh, feelings are not really processed. They're just uh, pushed down by rules and regulations and they would then bubble up in nasty ways. And you have a lot of guilt and a lot of shame. Even though you have not as much chaos there's not, not a lot much of freedom of individual uh, expression. And thus, you move on to the stage, next stage, stage orange. Yes, so stage orange is now again about hedonistically solving your desires and getting more, having more sex and getting better food and uh, watching movies and winning the game of life through success. But again, it's unsustainable. So unsustainable, you sacrifice your body, your health is suffering. You realize that the planet is not sustainable to live this way as we live in the Western societies. You realize that a lot of people are suffering and not everyone can be successful. Not everyone can grab themselves by the bootstraps and become a millionaire. And thus you move on to stage orange, which now is more communal. You value more feeling. You value, yeah, but you really want to, everyone to be, everything to be just. You want to remove all the injustice. You want everyone to be equal, get rid of the power structures, kind of flatten the, the hierarchical pyramid of power. And you, you want to fight for these just causes. You maybe care now for more animals. Your, your circle of concern expands, but you realize that simply raising awareness of issues, not solving them on a deeper level, doesn't re really lead to positive changes. Yes, awareness is a very important part but simply that won't solve issues in themselves. And there's, you need to, one, you can't just change one part. You realize that it changes another part. And be, there's some complex relationships between these, between different things, between systems. And that's why you move on to the next stage. And stage yellow is the next stage on tier two now. And it's systemic. It understands that you need these multiple perspectives to solve the complex issues. But again, it's too individualistic, which poses a problem because then you can't actually solve things. And finally, move on to the, the last stage, uh, stage circle, which we just covered, which is more, even more now taking every single human, every single, the whole planet is now the circle of concern. And you're now valuing wisdom, valuing deep, deep uh, insight through experience. You realize that thinking itself won't solve these issues. And you really value now wisdom and the well-being of the entire planet. And this is really the model of spiral dynamics. Yes. So that was the model. Does this actually imply or does this actually, um, is this actually usable in your life? Have you, Nikos, noticed any uh, like applications in your own life? Have you noticed yourself going through these stages, for example? I definitely have. When I think back, I noticed that, especially during 
early middle school, when I was maybe uh, from six to, to 13, 14, I was a lot in this stage blue, really valuing the school structure, really valuing following the rules, following the regulations, being a good student, really following maybe this uh, more stage blue. And then I moved a lot into this stage orange. And suddenly I only valued a lot of pleasure, a lot of gambling, a lot of video games, eating a lot of uh, fast food, a lot of chips. But then I noticed that my health was suffering. Uh, it was not meaningful. I felt like there was something missing. And then I moved on to this maybe could be considered stage green path. I was, uh, I, I, I was like a vegan at one point and I was very into meditation and all these hippie things. I really loved that. And I wanted just to, uh, at that point, I really didn't care about money at all. I've, I only valued, maybe I just wanted to do music and be a musician, live this happy free life. But then again, I moved maybe, uh, I'm still, I would say I'm still maybe moved back a bit to orange and I'm still in, in this orange to green space. But this yellow, I have maybe noticed some of my thinking has become uh, just a tiny bit more uh, through the, through the systemic. But I do have noticed that it has, I have been going through these changes of what I value, what I get triggered by, of my belief systems changing. And this I definitely have noticed in my life. How about you, Max? Yes, well, I've really clearly noticed the stages in my own life. Even if you look at, back at like uh, really early childhood, of course, I don't really remember being at stage beige, but I really remember being at stage purple, having a small group of friends, then eventually evolving to stage red. Uh, our group of friends, we really liked like drawing. And I kind of became like that stage red, like leader, like I got all the best sharpest pencils, <laughs> all of that. And after that, I remember uh, going to the next stage, stage blue. I became kind of like religious. Like I thought that, ah, masturbation is wrong. And I was really, really like guilt tripping myself over that. And uh, uh, then after that, uh, in middle school, I started focusing more on like success and uh, looking better, like having better fashion and all of that. The basic like self-help stuff. I noticed that like focusing really on stage orange stuff, browsing social media now. Before that, I had not cared about it at all. Uh, and after that, I realized that it was unsustainable. It caused me a lot of stress and health problems. So I started focusing more on like these, uh, um, like dealing with my stress and dealing with trauma and like relationships has been a big focus on me, like my life uh, in the past like few years as well. And now I'm noticing that um, I'm also valuing the model of spiral dynamics a lot more. I see the value in it and see the value of other belief systems, which I would also characterize as stage yellow. But I also feel like I need to integrate the lower stages, like the discipline of stage blue, as well as the financial aspects of stage orange. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. So we've cl clearly seen that we're, our lives at least have followed these stages. I don't know if you listeners have also similar experiences, but uh, when I've had Spartan Dynamics classes in school, uh, other people have also said that they can really apply that to their life. They can really see that. Uh, my partner also can see clearly that she's gone through the stages of stage blue. And uh, I also, uh, when I was at stage blue in middle school or before that, uh, I was even like uh, against LGBTQ stuff. Like I was, I was lo low key, like uh, really characteristic of stage like blue. Like I was religious. I was weirded out by LGBTQ plus stuff. And uh, like, I was kind of hardcore on that. But then I evolved to the next stage, my values changed, now everything is completely fine. I see these different perspectives, different values, and the, the value of all these different stages. So it's really interesting when you can actually apply that to your life. You can see where you're going, uh, but I've also noticed when I've questioned people in class, uh, or questioned people outside of class, rather my friends, uh, a lot of people tend to want to put themselves higher on the spiral. Like you have this desire to be like, more evolved or better in some way. So if someone's at, for example, stage orange, you say, oh, well, I'm at stage yellow, of course, because that's the uh, the best evolved stage, which sort of fits my values. Yeah, as you said, Max, that's a common use. Tend to put yourself about two stages above where you're really at. So it's very uncommon that if you're more, if you really would be at stage blue, that you would uh, say that you would still be at stage orange because you vilify in general, the one stage above and one stage below, below, and you maybe see yourself as being more two stages above. Exactly. Now let's get into, that was a good segue into some common misconceptions, some common uh, maybe uh, questions about this model, some things that remain unsure, and some things that maybe can trigger other people about this model. You have something that, at least one that comes to my mind is that it's easy to tend to see just to lay, uh, 
put people these colors. Classify. Classify them. people. Oh, this person is stage blue. Oh, this person is stage orange. Oh, this person is stage red. And seeing somehow that these models would be better somehow that they're more higher. It's simply just like a, a child is no worse than an adult. An adult has simply just developed for longer. Or a seed of a tree is not better than the tree. There's no, there, there's no better or worse in these. They simply just build upon each other. And all these stages are needed. And all these stages are simply le uh, survival levels strategies. of survival stage strategies and levels of development. And you have to develop through all these stages and there's no, no really bad or good stage. It's simply just how we develop through our psyche and, our, our, and the society at large. Is there more misconceptions or questions you have about this? Some people raise well, them in your class. Well, some people question why this model isn't as known as it could be. And, uh, uh, well, a good explanation that I've heard about that is that uh, the model, again, it says that some things are more evolved than others. So you wouldn't really like to admit that you're maybe not at the highest stage. So that's why maybe that's a good explanation why it wouldn't be as popular, even though there is like proof, for example, in our lives and proof in other people's lives that the model can be applied. So so it's not really nice to hear maybe. These it's not nice things. to hear that you're maybe not at the highest stage or that some people who you oppose would be more developed. It's not really nice to hear that. But simply, it's good maybe to take this as another lens you can use in your life. Maybe yes. to, uh, if you're if very triggered by something, you can use this lens to maybe think, like, what am I really triggered by? And what could be the cause of that in, uh, in my worldview? Exactly. So you use this as a tool, not as adopting it into your belief system and thinking that's how everything works and it's it's rigid along the system. And maybe uh, in, in in all the stages, try to think about how is this, uh, we went through all the, the, maybe the negative parts or the toxic parts in each stage. Think of them in your life. Are you really, are you tired of being stressed all the time? Are you tired of uh, being uh, unhealthy all the time, feeling like, feel like you're never really, uh, you're, you don't feel meaning in your life. You feel like you're just going day by day trying to get more of these things in your life, more material things. Try to feel, or maybe at stage two, try to realize that these strict rules and regulations are creating a lot of limitations, a lot of shame and guilt. Or then maybe in Greece, realize that the issues are not really being solved. And simply raising awareness doesn't maybe solve these complex issues. Exactly. So see how you could apply it to your life. And also uh, one of the main benefits that I've experienced, which you might also experience, is that it helps understand conflicts. For example, in politics or in your family or friend group, it helps understand that why someone might not like what you said or why someone uh, doesn't like another idea or why, why things are the way they are. That's maybe what I would say the main benefit of understanding this model is. By becoming a better leader. Becoming a better point. leader because you understand different perspectives, different people. So you can actually talk to them in the way they want to be talked to, get solutions that they need. You can kind of adopt, uh, realize uh, people, their worldview and adopt their worldview and speak to them from that place using the same language. And in a way you can relate to them more, maybe even help them through that better. You realize uh, it's very easy, even your relationship, to realize this, but also at the society at large. It's a very complex model. I'm not saying that either of us really completely understand this model and where it came from. Is there something more you would like to add, Max? Well, maybe that there are also uh, other tangents you can make with different psychological models. For example, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You can really see that uh, stage blue or stage stage uh, beige and stage red. They really focus on those physiological needs. You can see that uh, stage blue then starts focusing on the belongingness and love needs, and stage orange wants the esteem, and stage yellow now focuses on self-actualization, and stage turquoise now on self-transcendence. That it goes along other patterns of development as well, other models. So you can see that there are tangents. And also the, um, what's it called, the developmental stages as in the sensum, sensomotoric, or how, what is it? What is it in English? I'm not I'm sure I remember this. The sensory and motoric stage, that's stage beige as well. The emotional stage is stage purple and uh, concrete uh, the concrete operation. operations, stage red and stage blue, formal operations would be stage orange and then post-formal would be stage green. So you can see that it fits all these different models. And also you can see that there are tangents you can make in 
uh, like age groups. Like for example, for me, uh, I was stage beige uh, in my younger years, which I don't really remember, but I uh, when I'm a baby. And then after that, I became stage purple. I started thinking animistically and uh, uh, you have a very vivid imagination and then you evolved to the next stages. And you can really see that you can apply that to your life and to ages to understand, for example, children better. You can understand if you're a teacher, then that's an excellent quality to have. So Max, if, if someone has now understood, listen to this podcast, come to this point, what can they do in their life? What can they start thinking to really make some positive impact in their life? What can they take from this to their life? Some concrete things. Concrete things you can take from this uh, podcast. Maybe to start thinking more systemically. Start seeing these stages in different things in yourself, for example. Start focusing on uh, why things might be the way they are and analyze it through the lens of the spiral dynamic scales. So to analyze things from the lens. That's that's maybe my biggest advice. And then you can reach a lot of understanding about the things. Again, remember, it's just a, a lens. So again, you're only getting one perspective of the elephant. So you can also use other models to understand. So don't just limit yourself to the spiral dynamics like uh, model. It's a really good model, but it shouldn't be your only tool in your tool bag. So maybe, as you said, Max, through this episode, we might have given you one more lens. Maybe you only had one lens before, now you have two lenses, and that helps a lot. Even getting two perspectives from the world from two different models can help you really understand what's going on, create better sense of understanding of how the th- things work. So take this as a lens and try using it. Try looking through this lens to pro- issues in your personal and maybe uh, politics and society at large. Try test this lens out and how does the world look through this lens? And maybe, maybe through this lens you might see more understanding about the world at large. Yes, and I think that's where we're going to end it today. And uh, yes, thank you for listening to our podcast. uh, And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you very much.